name is Annie Novotny, Client Services Coordinator for the Women's Resource Center. Thank you so much for joining us today for our self-defense webinar. Today you will learn more about keenly awareness of your surroundings for early detection and ways to avoid a potential issue. It's my pleasure to introduce you to today's presenter, Mariana Bodhi, owner of Soul Harmony Therapies. Mary has over 35 years of experience in leading meditation, yoga, and breathing work. She is also a licensed massage therapist. Mary is known as a joyful healer of body, mind, and soul. Over to you, Mary. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here always. Thank you for having me. Uh, welcome to the Woman's Self-Defense mini-series. So this is definitely a small, short overview of what it is that this uh, woman's self-defense class really entails. It can be, uh, uh, most of the time I teach it in a one day, full one day class. And sometimes we've actually even done it in a two day class where you get more hands on. You're welcome to contact me if you'd like that kind of work. However, this is our little mini series for YouTube for the Women's Resource Center of uh, Bradenton and Sarasota and Venice. Welcome, thank you. Uh, we are going to be looking at your awareness, how it is that for the most part in this first session, this first part, we're going to be working with prevention. How is it that you handle yourself, uh, keep an eye, a keen awareness, an eye on what's happening in your surroundings, and to do that and to still be able to have fun. We do not have to be fearful in order to be safe. Um, and to have more of an awareness about what's happening in front of us. So we're gonna talk a lot about that today and um, how to carry your body, how uh, to use your voice, how to use your way of being really, your presence, your groundedness in order to bring about this strength of being, this uh, presence that is bigger really than you are. Uh, I'm imagining you may have seen someone at some point who's been in front of the room and maybe this is a very uh, petite woman or a, a man who doesn't have a large stature. However, his presence is huge or her presence is huge and takes up the whole stage. It's kind of like that. We want to learn how to be bigger than we are and uh, come off with confidence and an awareness of what's happening around us. Um, be uh, able to show that we know exactly where we're going and don't mess with us. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I have a little PowerPoint. I'm going to come up here closer to the computer and work with this PowerPoint for you. And then also we're going to watch a YouTube video today that's going to show you how to pay attention to your uh, surroundings. It'll give you an idea about what's entailed there. So first we'll look at the PowerPoint. And um, we'll go over a little bit of some things with that. So woman's self-defense class and uh, this part of what I do, I call Dragonfly Dojo. So anything that has to do with breath work, breath therapy, um, martial arts, uh, Qigong, uh, Tai Chi, we work with, I call it um, Dragon's Breath Therapy. So that's where that comes from. And... This two-part mini-series, today we're going to work with how to become keenly aware of your surroundings, as we've talked about before, before early detection and ways to avoid a potential issue. In our next series, part two, just so you know what's going to come up uh, in the future, how you walk, talk, and carry your belongings for best protection. We'll talk a little bit about that today as well, and how and where to attack if necessary. So we actually get into some physical aspects and actually some weaponry as well, some very female friendly kind of weapons that you can carry. Most women know about a pepper spray and a lot of people carry pepper spray. Whistles are excellent, um, but we'll talk about that more in detail in part two. So here at part one, being aware of your surroundings, how to become keenly aware of your surroundings for early detection. Some of the things we're gonna, that I'd like to bring up is always scan the whole landscape, not only the direction, or the path you are going. So that means that when you're walking, you are, yes, walking in a direction. However, your eyes scan the whole area. 
I know that I've been with people who, you know, being out in the woods and they have this ability to be able to see the, the bird or they have the ability to be able to see the alligator, you know, here living here in Florida, you know, that they see it and other people don't. Well, it's the ability to be able to scan the whole area, not just looking at maybe the road, even though we have to keep our attention on the road, just like we need to keep our attention on where we're walking. However, we can do that by paying attention to the full landscape. So that's a practice that I'd like you actually to take from this video and take it with you to your daily activity. So when you walk from the house to the car, when you walk in your, uh, at the mall, um, when you're doing something, pay attention to your surroundings. What is the totality of everything you're seeing? The bushes, the cars, the people, the wildlife, what is it, the fullness of what you're seeing, not just in one direction. One of the things to avoid and that we you know, do a lot now is we're on our phones. So we're looking down at our phones constantly. And this is a surefired way to not be aware of your surroundings. Um, so that's a practice thing. So I'd like you to practice. And when I've taught this class in the past, I've had women who have come at, you know, up to me afterwards or talk with me afterwards and said, that was amazing because now my way of viewing the world is different, not only for my safety, but for how it is I see so much more in my view than I used to. Um, another aspect is to keep an eye, uh, keep an eye on your rear. Possi uh, possibility of being followed, allow others to go ahead of you if you feel uncomfortable with their presence. So when you're walking, you know, like downtown and you, uh, one of the techniques actually is to look in a window. So if you are passing by a window, you can look in the window and see who's walking behind you through the window. It acts like a mirror. So that's one of the techniques. You can very gently look back or turn around if with, you're with a group of people. You can turn around and act like you're talking to somebody or you are talking to somebody, but you're also checking out what's happening behind you. So keep an eye on what's happening on your rear. Uh, the possibility of being followed. And if there's any doubt in your awareness, your intuition says, mm, I'm not comfortable with this person following me, stop in a place that feels safe and wait for that person to go by or that group of people to go by. So now you're in the rear and you are the one who gets to keep an eye on them instead of the other way around, okay? That's an excellent uh, tip and one that I actually use often, especially when I'm with friends. Uh, look towards, uh, well, look, look towards past, looks, look towards, hmm, like the way I got that worded, sorry about that, look towards pass by windows. Oh, look towards pass by windows as a possible way to see behind you without turning around. This is what we just talked about. Um, try that. It's fun because you can see a lot and you can do that during the day as well. You keep an eye on what's happening behind you through a big plate glass window, which is very common in a downtown or city area. Um, use attention when passing trees, bushes, buildings, alleys, and parked cars. So, you know, trees, um, and again, I want to really bring this in, is that this isn't about being fearful. It's about paying attention. It's about being a uh, part of your um, awareness of your life, the life that you're living here and now. So being... Um, aware of the bushes, the trees, the buildings, you're also able to see them in a greater capacity than you would be if you were just ignoring them or looking down at your phone or looking straight ahead at the sidewalk. The sidewalk is only one aspect of the fullness of your view. So paying attention when you pass by trees, bushes, buildings, alleys, that you're aware of what possibly might be around the corner that someone or something is not hiding an animal, even a dog. Um, you wanna just keep an eye on what's going on behind parked cars or a biggie, yeah, parking lots. Um, listen for broad sounds of voices or footsteps. So same thing, the broadness of your view. What is it you're hearing? Not just what is it that you're seeing, also what you hear can that's another great practice is that you get with the 
uh, sit in a place, sit in a park and see how much you can hear that's not just here. That's not just within your view talking to your friend. So you can talk to your friend, but also hear the birds or talking with your friend or your friend is speaking and you can hear the people, um, you know, several feet away, 10 feet, 20 feet away talking, kids playing. Not eavesdropping, but paying attention, paying attention to who's around, what's being said, just so that you, uh, again, have more awareness in your uh, place here in the reality that you're at right now in this life, right here in this moment. And then breathe with confidence. I actually do breath therapy. So breath is a huge thing, part of you know working out. Obviously our lives without breath, we can't exist. We don't exist without our breath. Those are other classes that I've done. And I talk about breath a lot because it is um, a very large focus of mine. But breathing with confidence, when you breathe with confidence, when your breath is deep and you're aware, you're present, you're grounded, you're grounded in that moment, in that place, you have a lot more strength and a lot more, uh, you're a bigger. Like I said, you show up bigger. When you're breathing fully, you show up bigger. So you want to breathe with confidence. You want your body to exude, I'm uh, confident, I'm strong, I'm ready, no matter who you are or what your stature is or what your height is or any of that or your physical ability or how much you work out any of that it doesn't matter what matters is what you present to the space at the time and so in this you know in this time talking about women's self-defense being aware of your surroundings you want to have that confidence that presence of I'm here I'm here fully and grounded and I'm ready for anything that may come up and don't mess with me, <laughs> you know, like really like don't mess with me. I'm, I got some place to go. So my father was, a, I'll tell you this uh, little story. My dad was a police officer for a short period of his life. And he actually did a lot of my training. And then I also have 12 years of martial arts. So um, that's my background as far as uh, some of what you're learning today. Um, my father, you know, was the person who installed in me a lot of these techniques actually in the beginning as a, at a very young age. And, you know, he was the one who said, act like you know where you're going. You know, don't go from point A to point B slowly. And, you know, you want to go from point A to point B like you know exactly where you're going. And you're not, you're, you're avoiding um, somebody who looks at you as the possibility of a victim. Um, so we are going to look at a YouTube video now. These are some videos, and you can go back and look at these. These are some other ones that uh, are available for you. But the one we're going to look at today is test your awareness. And I'm going to bring that up right now. So give me one second while I do that. And let me see how this works. <laughs> and let's see here. And now I'm going to screen share again. Very good. And here we go. So this is testing your awareness. I'd like you to count how many times the people in white, wearing white, pass the ball. So that's the awareness test. Count how many times the people in white pass the ball. There's your people in white. The answer is 13. However, did you see the moonwalking bear? Did you see the moonwalking bear? So let's watch again. Did you see it that time? Good. That's what an awareness test is. That's all about what it is that you could miss if you're not paying attention. Let's go back. Let me uh, to figure out how I do this. <laughs> Thank you for your patience with me. 
and we'll go back to good. There you go. And here we are back at our PowerPoint. So there you go. That is a great example of how it is we can miss something that's right in front of us when we're paying attention to something else. So you were there to, you know, you were instructed to count how many uh, passes the ball was taking with the people who were wearing white. So here we go. And the bear walked right by and you didn't even see him. So that's the kind of thing we want to pay attention to and we want to get used to. Like I said, it's a practice. It's a practiced awareness that you will get better at with time. And I highly recommend you start when you leave this uh, seminar, this webinar. Um, that you get that idea started. The other ones that are on here, the monkey business illusion is very similar. It's uh, a different type of video with the same sort of thing with the moonwalking bear or the monkey. And then these, how aware are you video one, two, and three uh, by voices on call are actually, um, I believe they're FBI training or uh, TSA training to uh, pay attention to what's happening aware around you. So that's very wonderful as well. A lot happens in those videos that's a lot of fun to see uh, what you miss and what you catch. Um, and now ways to avoid potential issue. Never allow yourself to be enclosed, locked or blocked in a corner room, car park or building. So I'm gonna repeat that. Never allow yourself to be enclosed, locked or blocked in a corner room, car park or building. So that means that when I park somewhere, uh, if I'm at a party, I choose not to park where someone else is gonna park behind me. This is something that I do not, you know, I understand to trust the people that, you know, that's having the party and everyone that's gonna be there, but I prefer to have my vehicle able to leave. So I would rather park further away, pay attention and have awareness as I'm walking to the party than to be blocked in and not be able to get out when I choose. Um, I do that for several reasons. My own safety, the safety of the group. If by some chance there was some sort of an, um, a, a, an issue that needed to be handled in, immediately in some way, and I, would, I needed to leave that I could do that or I could go get help. Um, so that's in a, in a car park. Um, never allow yourself to be enclosed, locked, or blocked. So that means in a car that uh, the car is locked in a way that you can't get out, childproof. Um, you know, a childproof lock where you're unable to get out. Enclosed would be, again, um, in a room or in a corner. I talk about a corner here. Uh, you do not want to be put into a corner. In, in At all potential that you can avoid, you want to not be set put into a corner. You don't want somebody to put you into a corner where you can't get out because then you are going to have to do something physical to get away if that's where you are. You can avoid that if you have the ability to walk or run or leave, which is our first line of avoidance. First thing is to pay attention to your surroundings to avoid anything, the way you walk, talk, the way you carry yourself, all has a, um, a vibe to it that keeps a potential uh, issue from happening. If there starts to become some sort of altercation, then the first thing is to see if you can diffuse it by, you know, thank you, no, I'm not interested, thank you, whatever, and keep moving in your confident and direct way. And if that still doesn't work, run. Um, run and try to get away as quickly and into a safe place with other people as soon as possible. If that doesn't work, then in the second series, part of this series, we are going to learn some techniques and some places where you would actually attack if needed. The idea with these classes is that hopefully you'll never need it, okay? But to know how will give you the extra confidence to say, I know I, if I have to, I know what to do. And I carry that with me. So don't mess with me. <laughs> okay. Um, and like I said, all this, you know, this is a lot of talk about being careful and, you know, there's, it's easy for us to get fearful. And that is absolutely not what this class is about. This class is about aware, being aware and having fun and being present and being present with your friends and your events and your surroundings. That's what this class is about. 
it is not about bringing fear or any kind of, um, you know, caution to you that should bring any kind of anxiety. Okay. Um, always keep your keys out and ready to use to unlock your house or car before you walk out of your house or car. So when you leave your house, you have your car key in your, or you leave the mall or leave the party, you have your car key ready in your hand. You're ready to go. Don't these unlock, you know, the automatic locks don't unlock it until you're at it so that you don't unlock it and someone else can get in. So now you're going to unlock it as soon as you walk, as soon as you walk up. Same thing when you leave your car. So when you go from your car to your house, you're going to have your house key in your hand before you get out of the car unlocked. So the car is locked. You have your key, your house key in your hand, and then you unlock the car door, get out, lock the car door, walk to the house with the key. Now you're ready to go right in. There's no messing around. Like I said, going from point A to point B and knowing where you're going and doing it with confidence and joy, right? Here I am. I'm going, going home or going out, right? Um, have keys in ready position and or a weapon in your hand ready if needed. So if you're in a position where you feel like that's necessary, um, there you'll learn this in the second class, second series, how to keep your keys in your hand. And then you'll learn, you'll I'll share with you some uh, very female friendly weapons uh, that are, are nice to have, you know. Uh, just to have on hand if you need it. Um, and to have that in your hand if you feel that that's necessary. You know, sometimes I've felt like that's necessary. Other times I'm not concerned about. My keys in my hand are always there because my keys are in my hand, whether I'm leaving the house and going somewhere or vice versa. My keys are always in basically ready position. So they're always there and ready to go. But as far as a weapon, I don't generally... Um, have a weapon ready. Uh, one of the weapons you're going to learn about is a keychain that is can be used as a weapon. It's actually a keychain that's used for weaponry, and it looks very feminine. It's very cool. Um, and then again, breathe with confidence. Ways to avoid potential issue. Breathe with confidence means you're grounded, you're present, you're tall, you're there, your breath is full, you're ready. You're ready for the day, you're ready for the excitement, the joy of whatever it is you're out to experience. And you're, um, you're aware and grounded, aware, 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 right? <laughs> I like that word, actually, be aware. Um, emergency uh, information, this, is, uh, this actually comes off of the internet, seven cru critical rules to self-defense. One is be aware of your surroundings at all times. Two, walk confidently and avoid eye contact. So being aware of your surroundings, we've talked about that. Being alert, notice the little picture there says eyes and ears, being alert. We've talked about different ways of having that happen and you bring this awareness with you, your attention. Walk confidently and avoid eye contact. So avoiding eye contact, there's, you know, there's some controversy about that amongst some, some trainers. And uh, avoiding on con eye contact is the best bet. Um, however, if you are in an altercation, make eye contact and make it strong. You know exactly what you're doing, who you are, what you want, make it very strong. Avoid confrontation. The safest approach to self-defense is to avoid any potential physical confrontation. Do whatever you have to do to avoid a physical confrontation. So that means running, hey man, it's all good, you know, peace. I don't recommend opening up your purse or your pocketbook or your wallet in order to give someone money because now you've opened up the potential of all your credit cards, your ID, everything. Opening up your purse is also opening up to your keys, keys to your home, your car, so on. So, no, keep your purse uh, hidden and in and closed. I also recommend using a purse that has um, zippers, not anything that's open so that things don't fall out. And that's also for um, pickpocketing and shoplift, you know, shoplifting self-defense. And, you know, you want a purse, you want a purse that's zippered. And actually in the second series, we're going to learn about how to use a purse as a weapon. 
So you can imagine our purses a lot of the times are filled with all kinds of stuff and quite heavy. Um, so having your purse in your hand in a way that makes it a weapon and not something that could easily be taken off of your shoulder. You wanna have your purse in your hand as something that you could use and swing. And also wearing a purse that has a side strap that goes across the body. Um, so that's the other thing. So avoiding confrontation at all costs, and that includes running, especially if you happen to be in great shape and can run <laughs> really good. Um, but avoid whatever, you know, just, hey man, it's all good. Okay, at last resort, attack first. So that's what I mean by avoiding contact, avoiding eye contact. So yes, avoid eye contact if you're walking by somebody, just don't make eye contact. However, if you have now gotten into a confrontation with somebody and you're in the place of a possible attack on your part, you wanna attack first and you wanna make that eye contact strong and very clear, okay? Um, if you attack first, then you must attack all the way. And this is one of the things I find that women uh, find hard a lot of the times is um, the ability to be able to actually hit, to hit with their um, fist. We're gonna learn how to hit in the second series, um, to hit with their fist or to um, kick or to scream, to yell no. Uh, all these are, um, can be challenging for women to, you know, we can get angry and we can, uh, you know, yell or be upset. But when it comes to an actual confrontation, we are uh, very likely to not want to yell. One of the things that I work with, with most of the women that I work with is how to hit and hit appropriately and hit through. And then how to yell and scream in a way that means business. I'm sure that you uh, maybe, you know, there's a difference between screaming in anger. There's a difference between screaming in excitement. There is a difference between screaming in terror. And it's uh, you having the say so over how it is that you're going to scream for self defense. So you may be feeling terror at the time, maybe not quite yet, but how to say no, how to say no and say it like you mean it with confidence and, like I said, with eye contact. No stay away. And uh, a lot of potential issue can be stopped just with that. Okay. Uh, people who are, you know, out to get something to steal your purse, to steal your merchandise, to whatever, they're, you know, they're usually looking for someone that they can do that easily with. They're not looking for a fight. So if you start to give somebody a fight, you start to, they, a lot of the times they'll just be done. They'll pick on somebody else. Um, and in the meantime, you can, you know, call somebody and get help, which is the last one on this list here. Six is remember the three cru crucial strike zones, which we're going to go over that again in detail in the second part of this series. Eyes, throat, and groin. So one of the things we're gonna do in this series is we're actually going to, eyes, throat, and groin are very quick and easy. Eyes, throat, and the growing area, which I think every woman, every woman knows about the, the growing area. Um, so that is um, the three critical uh, strike zones. However, you're, I'm gonna actually show you some others that are more really any place in the body if done hard and with um, vigor can, is gonna hurt. And then, you know, when you're dealing with somebody who's on drugs, a major drug effect, they may not feel anything at all. However, eyes, if you poke eyes, that will stop someone. Throat usually takes away their breath and groin will take, you know, will double somebody over in pain. Um, however, if they're on major drugs, they may not feel it. Um, and then the last is yell for help. Help. No, I mean like screaming. And in my one day workshop or two day workshop, we scream. We learn how to scream. So I play with recommending that you get outside, outside, because it's, you know, you also, um, don't want to alarm your neighbors, but uh, getting outside and pretending that 
like the event is that you're going to yell and have your voice go all the way across your yard that you're not just yelling at the person right in front of you or three feet away or six feet away, but you wanna be yelling at 20, 30 feet away. That's who you want to have hear you. And even further, as far out as you can go is how you wanna yell, okay? So that's, um, that's the seven critical rules to self-defense. And now we're gonna get into part two, but we'll do that with our next class. Um, so for right now, let's go back and recap. Um, I would love it if you all could uh, ask questions, but I'm going to bring pose some questions that have come up over time. Um, so uh, uh, what I hear from people is, well, how is it that I can, um, you know, keep someone from being interested in me or thinking that I might have something that they want. Um, some of it is, like I said, the way we carry ourselves. Um, you know, women wearing high heels. I, I'm high heels look great. They're you can't run in them. Um, they do, however, uh, can be a, a very um, wonderful weapon in some respects. But um, Taking your time and uh, I don't know how to say this and have it come out. It's not a judgment, but you know, without wiggling your butt, you know, it's not about you know looking good going from point A to point B. When you are in a situation that you have any insecurity, it's about getting from one place to the other. It's not about how you look getting from one place to the other. Um, and like I said, things like having your purse available, having your keys out. I carry a very large, heavy water bottle with me. That's a incredible, it's a metal water bottle. That's an incredible weapon. Um, those are things that uh, we can do. I had a friend of mine years ago that um, said, I look like a farmer walking across a field when I walked. And to me, that was a compliment, <laughs> but um, you know, in other words, I look like I was going from one place to the other. And I can look pretty once I get there. I can look, you know, or, you know, when I was a younger woman, I can look sexy and I can look beautiful once I get there. But when I'm going from point A to point B, I want to I wanna look like that's, I know exactly where I'm going. Um, so that's some of the things. The way we dress, and um, I, there's a lot of awareness now about it's not about what she wore, which amen, brother, you know, it's not about what she wore, that women should be able to dress how they choose and not have it be a sign of um, possibility for a problem. And I, I thoroughly agree with that. Um, so I think it's more about how we carry ourselves than how we dress. Um, however, you know, I, I, um, I'm aware when I'm dressed up. I'm more aware when I'm dressed up because I don't feel as grounded possibly if I'm wearing high heels or if I'm wearing shoes that don't ground me. Um, I'm, I'm more aware. So those are some things you just wanna pay attention. Um, keep an eye on your rear, possibility of being followed. So those are very interesting um, ways that you can do that. And I'm actually going to stand up and show you how I would do that. So if I was with friends and I'm walking from one place to another, so walking and I've got girlfriends on both sides or I've got friends on both sides and I have this idea that I just want to kind of look behind me, I may walk, talk with my friends and just kind of, hey man, how you doing? Yeah, right. But now I'm talking with them, but I'm also checking out my environment back behind me. So that's one of the ways that you can pay attention to what's happening behind you. I do this a lot with friends. Um, looking at bushes. So if you've got a bush that's over on one side, so you're aware, the broadness of your awareness, your vision, your hearing, the broadness of your hearing. You walk along, you see a bush on one side, you're just going to be paying attention. There's a bush there, a tall tree or a bush that somebody could be hiding behind. And paying attention to where your friends are, if you have friends with you, you know, is every, how is, where is everybody placed? How are we, right? And when you come up to the bush, just gonna take a quick little look, 
just as you go by, you're just going to take a quick little look one way or the other. Um, so that's paying attention to what's happening behind you. And look, we've talked about looking at a mirror or excuse me, looking at a window to be able to see behind you. Um, paying attention to passing by trees, bushes, buildings, alleyways. Don't go in an alleyway. If you have an opportunity to go any other street besides a dark alley, you know, that's what movies are made out of. Don't go down the dark alley. Go, uh, try to stay in the most populated places you can. Try to drive there. You know, when you drive, drive in on streets that are populated, um, that have, that are busy. When you're walking in a downtown area, stay on streets that have people, that have businesses that are open that have some place that you can jump into if you need to, okay? If you're in a parking lot, pay attention to the parked cars, pay attention to who's around you, the noises for sure. Um, garages echo. So it's very easy to hear what's happening in a garage generally. You can pay attention um, by just listening, listening a little broader than normal. You can hear footsteps, you can hear uh, car doors, you can hear what's happening from many, many feet away inside a garage. And then outside in a, in a parking lot, you can hear quite a bit as well um, and paying attention. So if you have the opportunity to park your car closer to the building, you do. And you know a lot of uh, people uh, working at malls, or it used to be that you know a lot of women worked at malls and they'd park on the back 40 of the parking lot and walk out to the car at night by themselves, you know, if you can have a friend with you. And if not, you use your techniques. You use your techniques of breathing confidently, paying attention to all of your surroundings, paying attention to what's behind you. And even if I'm not with friends, I'll turn around, you know, uh, you know, pretend like I'm dancing or something, but um, turn around, and take a look, or I turn around with vengeance. Like in other words, I'm turning around to look and see what's behind me because I'm going to let you know that I know what I'm doing and don't mess with me, right? I'm going to turn around and look. Um, so yeah, paying attention and again, breathing with confidence. Excellent. Videos. Remember your monkey business, your test in testing your awareness. And here we go. We're just going to talk a little bit. Again, we're going over this again. Never allow yourself to be enclosed, locked or blocked in a corner room or car park or building. Um, lots of potential there for issue. So also working with women who have dealt with domestic violence. So uh, not allowing yourself to be in a room that you can't get out of. Um, uh, positioning yourself during an argument or a potential conversation of issue, po uh, positioning yourself near the door so that you can leave and you have your keys in your hand and you're ready to go if you need to. Um, those are some things that you, ways to avoid issues um, in self-defense with uh, a, a partner or a family member <clears throat> that there might be an issue with. And again, um, not going in a car with someone who you don't trust, not going in um, a vehicle or allowing yourself to be locked in a room. Uh, you don't go into a room that has a locked door. Don't go into a vehicle that you can't get out of. Um, uh, that's, those are some of the things to pay attention to. Take your own car. Uh, I have been in situations in the past where I did not feel comfortable. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got allergies happening right now. Um, uh, that I've been in a situation where I didn't feel comfortable driving with the person, so I drove my own car. Uh, you know, I think I may want to leave early, so I'm just going to drive my own car. That way I can go whenever I choose. And, you know, I've got something I've got to do in the morning and I may leave earlier than you. So 
those kind of things. You can be in control. That's one of the most important things that we, uh, that I'd love to give you in this uh, conversation is that you are in control a lot more than you realize. Um, and you wanna use that control whenever possible. Um, and any, use your intuition. We are, we know more and feel more than we give ourselves credit for. So if there's anything that doesn't feel right, don't proceed. I saw something, one of the psychologists that I had worked with for a while that dealt with um, um, issues with people who have who've had attacks or had problems. And he said that, why is it that we um, continue to be nice, even when we start to feel something's off? but we just play nice, make sure, you know, it's okay. It, you know, I'll just see this through and then it'll be fine. And it ends up being a problem because we didn't listen to our intuition. So when your intuition is starting to spark up, pay attention, take your own car, pay attention to your surroundings. Don't allow yourself to be locked. Take an Uber home. If there's any doubt, take an Uber home, take a Lyft or an Uber home, call a friend. Uh, call the police. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't feel safe right now. Uh, thank you. Uh, don't, um, don't play nice. You don't need to. There's no reason to. You're, you're taking care of yourself. Okay. Um, we talked about always have your keys out and ready. I did not bring my keys with me. So I will bring them in session two so you can see how to carry your keys. Have your keys out and ready to use to unlock your house or car before you walk out of your house or car. Go over that again. So when you're in your car, your car is locked, you pull up to your house, you turn off your car, whatever you do with your car keys, if you can put them away and the car will lock automatically, great. It, the, get your house keys out. I do not recommend having your house keys and your car key on the same ring. That way, if somebody by some chance were to get your house key, they don't have your car key. If they have your car key, they do not have your house key. If you know you were in some sort of a um, scuffle and you lost your car key and everything worked out, they left, they ran, but the car key is gone, they don't have your house key. For whatever reason, you know, there's a lot of scenarios. If your purse is stolen and you have your house key in it and also your ID with your address, that could be a problem. So have your house key and your car key separate. That's, you know, and um, don't leave your purse unattended. That has nothing to do with self-defense. That has to do with, um, you know, that kind of event where you have your purse. You keep your purse on your shoulder. I recommend a side strap or holding it meaning a side strap, meaning it goes across your body um, so that it can't be pulled off. Uh, in the grocery store, I did actually have my purse stolen in the grocery store because I made a habit of putting it on the cart in the seat there where the baby would go and turned around and it was gone. That was a lesson for me. So uh, and then I didn't know who took it because intuition wise, I was like, mm, so I knew who took it, but I, I did not pay attention. So now I keep my purse on my shoulder or I actually lock it into the cart with the baby strap so that if anybody were to try to take it, it would get caught on the baby strap. They wouldn't be able to get it. Um, so yes. Uh, so keeping your purse with you, using it as a weapon, we're going to go over that in the second part. Um, have keys in ready position and or a weapon in your hand ready if needed. So we're going to talk about weapons and breathe. And we're going to talk right now a little bit about breath. So a big deep breath happens when you breathe into your belly. We're going to talk about a couple different types of breath. So right now, let's do that deep breath, that power breath, that breath that brings groundedness, centeredness, focus. So you're gonna take a deep breath into your belly. So expand your belly nice and big, nice and big, nice and big. And then upper belly moves as well. And then the chest moves as well. Good. So you're gonna bring that breath 
all the way up, hold it for a second or two, and then exhale, relaxing and releasing. This is a centering breath. It also is good for relaxation. It also helps with your parasympathetic nervous system. So it addresses your parasympathetic. It brings you into a place of relaxation. But that deep breath, when you're in a position like walking, it gives you confidence. It gives you groundedness. So again, let's try that deep breath. Nice and big into the belly. Upper belly and chest. Hold for a second or two. And exhale. I'm going to stand up and show you. So here we go. Yeah, hello. We go belly, upper belly, and chest. So nice big deep breath. Have your feet about shoulder width apart. Both feet nice and grounded on the floor. Good. Feel your feet on the floor. And now take one of those breaths. It can be through your nose or your mouth, either way. Inhale, belly, lower belly. Upper belly, feel that upper belly open. Chest. Hold for a second or two and exhale. Good. Now when you're walking and you're breathing like that, you bring in this confidence. You've got this deep breath that's very full, very aware, very there. Good. So that's the kind of breath I'd like you to practice when you're looking out at your horizon, paying attention to the bushes, how much is it you can see? Remember your moonwalking bear, right? That you want to be able to see how, what can you see? What birds can you see? What colors can you see? What people can you see? Just see the totality of your environment and breathe like that. Now I'm going to teach you a different type of breath. This is a breath that if we were meeting in person and we were going to have a full day class and you know, actually get involved in some physical um, activity, this breath is called a power breath or a, or a warrior's breath. And it's all in the upper body, but it happens automatically when you are in a stressful situation, as in life-threatening stressful situation. Your breath gets very shallow and very powerful. And that's done to do it focused wise, you actually creating this breath, you do it through the nose only. And it goes like this, only in the upper lung. We've talked about this breath in some of my past classes as well. So that's a power breath. That's if you really want to amp up your energy. You really want to amp it up, bring in like this. You're really uh, running or focusing. It's going to happen naturally in some sort of altercation. However, you can cause it to happen if you choose. If you want to play with that on your own, you can feel the different types of breath. That's going to bring lots of oxygen into your system at one time. Um, and again, I recommend you do that with both feet on the ground. If you are someone who exercises and runs, try it. Try that power breath while you run. And then every now and then take a nice big deep breath into the belly, upper belly, chest. Hold and exhale. Lower belly, upper belly, chest. Hold and exhale. Excellent. Power breath is all in the upper rib cage. Nothing goes into the belly at all. It all stays in the upper rib cage and chest, only through the nose. This is a representation of my ribs, <laughs> in case you hadn't figured that out. So that's a power breath. Try that when you're um, exerting yourself when you're doing that extra exercise at night or you know, you're know you exercising and you're doing that extra lift or you're doing that extra um, plank. You wanna hold that plank for a little longer. Um, doing an extra run, the extra run around the block, whatever, however it is you get your exercise and aerobics. And, or when you start to feel tired during the day, excellent way to bring in energy. 
So that's how, when you walk, you wanna be able to walk with confidence. And part of that is being able to breathe with confidence, paying attention to your breath as well as your surroundings, paying attention to how you're walking, what you're seeing, what you're hearing. So that's part one. And I hope very much that you will join us for part two. Let's see what else we just make sure we didn't miss anything else. And we've talked about this. Um, and we're gonna go over this again when we come back to part two. In part two, again, so we remember we're going to go into, we'll go back there. Um, in part two, we're gonna go into how walk, talk and carry your belongings for best protection. We've talked a little bit about that already. However, we're gonna do it again. So, and in more depth and detail about exactly how to carry your belongings. I'll have my keys with me. And then how and where to attack if necessary. We've touched a little bit about that and we will go into weapons. So we'll talk about weapons and how to use weapons effectively, which one you may like to um, have um, uh, that you uh, uh, resonate with. You know, what you feel like you can carry in your purse or that you like to have with you. I have different ones in different places and I'll share that with you in part two of our two-part mini series on women's self-defense. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very, very much.